Hey, this is Marie, and today we're making this hot pad. I love how it turned out. We're using 100% cotton yarn, any scraps that you have on hand. Let's get started. So to get started, we just need a size G hook. I have several examples of a size G hook. And we need a tapestry needle, we need a stitch marker, and a pair of snips. I have um, just a few cotton yarns here, just some examples that I had in my stash. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pick a cotton yarn to get started with this project. You could use acrylic if you were using it not to put like a hot pan on top of. Maybe you're using it for a plant or something like that. Um, then you could use acrylic, you could use whatever you like, what, you know, whatever kind of yarn. But if you're going to use the um, hot pad with a hot pan on top of it, then I um, use cotton generally. So let's go ahead and get started. I think I'll go ahead and get started with this color. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is make a slip knot. And I'm using this um, size G hook that I talked about earlier. This one is one of my favorite um, new hooks that I recently got and it's a Pioneer Woman and I just got it at Walmart. It came with three hooks in the set. It came with these other two. So it came with the F, the G, and the H. So I do really like those hooks, uh, but you should definitely check them out. So now that we've got our slip knot on our, our hook, we're going to go ahead and chain nine. One, two, Okay, and then we're going to join it into a ring. So joining it with the first crochet stitch, just do a yarn over and pull through both um, stitches. Now sometimes some of the cotton yarns are a little bit splitty, but um, this one's not too bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, chain one, and then I'm going to single crochet into the center of our ring, uh, I'm going to do 20. So that was one. Okay, and then I'm just going to check to see that I have 20, so, yep, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch into that first, um, I'm, I'm skipping over that first, um, just chain one, and I'm going to slip stitch into here, that first little stitch to join. So there we go. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is chain 21 and I'm going to chain 21 loosely. You can also use a magic ring if you like to do, but actually the way I did it, you can snug it up with just, by just pulling this, the string. And that's what we'll do at the end. We'll pull it up to snug up our hole in the center. So I'm going to go ahead and um, do our 21 chains. And, and I'm going to keep in mind that I'm going to do it loosely. So I'm going to go ahead and just chain the 21. So one, two. Okay, so now that I have the 21 chains, it looks like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and being careful not to twist it, I'm just going to go ahead and go to our next stitch, which is right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and yarn over, pull through that, and then yarn over. So just a single crochet. 
and then do one more single crochet which is yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two so now I'm going to do 21 more chains And then I'm going to just keep in mind that I want to keep those loose and I just and really they don't twist but I'm just keeping in the back of my mind that I don't want to twist that so I'm going to go ahead and go into the next space and so this is the one we were just in I'm going to go into here and then I'm going to do a single crochet and then I'm going to do one more single crochet and then I'm going to go ahead and chain 21 again and then I'm going to go ahead and go into the next one and do my single crochet and then 21 more and then I'm just going to continue this around and keeping in mind that I want to keep these loose and not twist them. I'll go ahead and meet back up with you when I get finished. So basically what I want to end up with is 10 of these loops all the way around. This is kind of what it looks like currently, but I will have 10 of these loops. Now I'm on my last little set on the, I'm on the ninth one right now and I'm doing number 10 of the little 21 chains. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so now I have 10, let me just make that little hole right there. I have a tail back there still but so you're just looking for ten of these little loops of 21 so five six seven eight nine ten okay now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do the next round and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go into the next space, the next um, single crochet. And then I'm just going to do another single crochet. And then I'm going to do in each one of these. Now you can do this in the back if you like. The back, like this little notch on the back, you can crochet into that. But I find that it's easier to just crochet into the center of this um, so like if I have this chain up like this, I just crochet right into the center of it. It just, it makes it easier. It's like less labor intensive, but you can do what you like because this is your project. So I'm going to go ahead and do 10. Okay, so what it looks like is I did that one that was in here and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then in the, um, so we did 21, remember, so we'll have 10 on this side. We're going to do three in this top one just to make the top of our, like, star of the, so I went ahead and did three single crochets in that one um, chain. And then let me just show you on another one. Basically what we're doing is we're kind of making the corner of each of the points of the star. And in the corner, you have to put the three just so it comes to a point. 
So then we'll go ahead and do single crochets all the way down the next side, so which would be 10. And then here's our last one, number 10. So this first round is, is the hardest. Once you get past this one, you're golden. So then I'm gonna go ahead and do a single crochet in here. And then I'm gonna start up the next loop. We'll call it a loop of um, the 21 chains. So I'm gonna do 10. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is once we have our 10 on this side, we're going to go ahead and do the three single crochets in the next one. One, two, three. And then we're going to do our 10 going down the other side. And then I'll do my one single crochet in the bottom and then I'm going to do 10 on the next side. So we're just going to continue on around just like this and really if you're off by a stitch you can make you know you can make two if you're missing one you could you know put two in one hole you could you know you could fudge this pretty well. If you have a problem with anything, like you've made a mistake, it's pretty easy and it's pretty forgiving. It's not like it's something that you wear. So just keep going. And this, this part right here is, um, this is the hardest. As long as you make the original chain row loose enough, you shouldn't have a problem with it. And then it gets to be more fun like as the rows go on. It's a little bit um, tricky to do this first row of the single crochets and then put your three in the top of each one. And it's not even really that tricky, but this is probably the most tricky part of this whole hot pad, but it is so cute and it's so addictive and you'll wanna make one for Christmas gifts for everyone. So I would keep going with it. And I have one more for my number 10. And then I'm going to do three in the top. Oops. But this is a perfect project if you're driving in the car, like you're the passenger, of course. Or if it's like a summertime, you know, thing that you can make for gifts. Okay, so I'll catch back up with you when I have all of these done. So basically what we're looking for is them to look like this with the 10, the three at the end, and then the 10 going down the next side. The 10, the three at the end, the 10 going down the next side. Once we get all of these done and we've met up here, then I'll show you the next part. Okay, now it kind of looks a little crazy at this point, like a little octopus with all these little <laughs> tentacles, kind of. But let's go ahead and I just wanted to show you, I have one last uh, single crochet to go into to make my 10 on this last little loop. Okay, and so now I'm going to go ahead and put a stitch marker in here just so I know where 
the round begins. Because sometimes this part gets confusing, like later on. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my stitch marker. Just using one of this type so that that I can take it out and just easily and not have a real small um, stitch marker in there that's harder to get out. So I went ahead and did my last of my 10. So I did my three single crochets in the top of this one and then the last of my 10 going down. And now I'm going to go ahead and single crochet in that one at the bottom. Then we're going to go ahead and single crochet in every single crochet all the way around doing three in that top, um, in the middle one of the top of each point. But every other one we're just gonna do a single crochet all the way around. And we're going to go ahead and single crochet into the back loop. So we'll go ahead and, it's a little tricky, okay, there we go. So in, in this one, so these are our stitches that we're going into. There's the front leg and the back leg. I'm just gonna go into the back leg and I'm going to single crochet all the way around. Okay, and then when we get to the top of our three, the center one, so this is one, two, and three, we're gonna go ahead and do three single crochets in the top of the point, which is the center of the three single crochets on the round before. So we're gonna do three, and then we're gonna do one in every other one. And we're just going into the back loop. Now, if you wanted to, you don't have to just do the back loop. You can do it in both legs. So you can go, you can crochet like that. Do your single crochet with both of the legs of the stitch underneath it, if you like. If you do it this other way, it just shows like a little ridge will be on here. And then the finished um, product will look like this, which I prefer. But you can just do, you can take both legs and then it will just look like, kind of like the back side. When we twist it, it will kind of look like there's no ridges. So if you like that ridge look, you can go ahead and crochet, uh, do your single crochets in the back loop, or you don't have to, it's up to you. This is your hot pad, <laughs> so. You can do it however you like. So we're just gonna single crochet in every stitch all the way around. Okay, now I've come to the three at the top. I just single crocheted in that first one. I'm going to go ahead and do three in this one, the center one of the three. And then single crochet in this one. And so you'll just continue on around. So it will start to look like this, but it will be wider. And basically what we're looking to do is just continue on all the way around until we have nine rows. So basically what we're looking to do is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're looking for nine rows and then we do a little something at the end where we're gonna twist it and put it all together like this so that it looks really cool and then crochet around the edge. But I'll show you all of that when we get to it. So basically right now, you're just gonna keep crocheting and you can change your colors, you can add colors, you can add two colors, you can add three colors, you can keep it all the same color, whatever you like during this whole time. 
and just keep crocheting. You can use scraps, each row a different color. It's totally up to you, whatever you'd like to do. Or you can do Christmas colors, Easter colors, holiday colors. So I will catch back up with you when I have my nine rows all the way around. Okay, so I'm back. I haven't, I don't have my nine rows yet, but I decided I'd like to change color now. And so what I did is I went ahead and I crocheted all the way around until I came to my stitch marker in that little, in the dip between the two points. And I'm gonna go ahead and just show you how I would change yarns. So I'm just gonna use this. I happen to have it in my stash. And let's see, I'm just gonna go ahead and tie this onto the other color. And then I'm just gonna continue on doing single crochets and I'm going to cover up these two tails while I'm crocheting so I'm still going just in the back loop or you can do the whole thing if you like but I'm doing the back loops and I'm crocheting over my ends I'll just give this a little tug and it looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and trim it. Okay, and then I'm just gonna continue on with my single crochet until I get to the, the middle one of the top of the point and put the three in. Just as I've been doing this whole time and then start single crocheting in all the rest. Okay, and that's what it looks like. I will catch back up with you when I get my nine rows crocheted. Okay, so at this point, I have done my nine rows and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now you can do less, you can do more, it's up to you. But I'm going to go ahead and do nine. And then what I did was I did my first one, two, three, four in the purple that we had. And I had this much left. So I didn't use the whole skein. And then I did the next one, two, three, four rows. And in this, I love cotton was the second one. This was the first one, Crafter's Secret Cotton. And then on the last row, I had this, which is sugar and cream. And so I did one round of this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set it all up to do the edging. So what happens is, is you have all of these points that look like this. It looks kind of like a mess right now, but you have all these points that look like this and then you just turn them like this. So you just go around and turn them. So basically it's like, here's the, your point, then you go this way, like that. Point, 
and then you turn it. Make a point and then turn it. Okay, so they're all kind of set up like this. And then what I do is I'm going to be crocheting around the edge and this time I'm going to pick up in both of the legs, like right in here of the stitch when I go in and crochet around. So um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is, so on this first stitch I've counted um, nine down. So the top one is where I'm going to go ahead and put three single crochets in that one. And then I'm going to do um, a single crochet in each of these. And so I'm going to count nine down, one, starting with this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is my ninth right here. So I have my yarn still attached to the other part when I was doing around and I am just going to leave it attached and use that same color yarn. You can change if you'd like. You would just snip it here and pull that yarn through and then attach with a new color if you wanted to do that. But I'm going to go ahead and use that same white or cream color to go around the edge. So I have this stitch on this hook and then I am going to put it through my ninth one, my ninth stitch, and then I'm going to pull through that one time, and then I'm going to pull through two. So I'm just going to do a single crochet, just like that. Then I'm going to go ahead and single crochet in each one of these stitches, and I am doing the front and the back legs of the stitch in this round, but you can do just the back if you like, again. But I am changing to do that. Oops. This yarn is a little bit stiffer, so it's a little bit harder to work with than some of this other softer yarn that I was working with. Like the purple and then this variegated were so nice to work with. This is a little bit um, firmer, so it's taking me a little bit longer to get through the stitches. Oops. Okay, so now that I've gotten through those those nine, I'm going to go ahead and do three in this top point. And then I'm going to go ahead and do nine in the next. So there's one. So I'm going to count two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'll do nine going down this, this point on the other side. So that was my one. Okay, let me see where I'm at. So there was my one with the three in it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one more. Nine. Okay, so that is my first one, and I'm going to go ahead and do that on the second one, the same exact thing. So I'm going to find my top middle stitch which will be my center where I'll put the three. So I've identified that. Then I do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm going to go ahead and I just have this like this. I'm going to go ahead and just single crochet right over. And so that stitch right there just attached my first uh, point of my star to the next point of the next um, little grouping. 
So that is what it looks like. So I'm going to keep going all the way around just like this and I will catch back up with you. So I'm doing my nine and then I'm going to do my three in the top. And then I'm going to go ahead and do nine going down. Okay, let me see if I have my nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One more. Nine. Okay. Now we're on to the next one and we're just going to do the same exact thing, identifying the top, center one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then attaching this point to this point of our star. Okay, so I will catch back up with you when I have done one round all the way around and then we'll check and see what, what it looks like at that point. Okay, so now we have that first round done, um, which pretty much just like set the twist on each one of these. And I am just at the point where I have finished the last nine and I'm going to be attaching it to the first nine. So I'm going to go ahead and go back down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'll be attaching it right here. With a single crochet. There we go. And so now all of them are attached together and I'm going to go ahead and do one more round around the whole thing doing just a single crochet in each space and then three in the center one. So I'm just going to continue on. There's no counting on this row. It's just every single space gets a single crochet. Okay, and then I'm at the top one right here where I'm going to put the three, which is in that center one. And then once I put the three in here, then I'll go ahead and just keep putting single crochets in the top of every stitch all the way around. So that is what it will look like. So I will meet back up with you when I get to the very end. Okay, so now I have gone all the way around the last time and I have one more stitch and then I'm going to go ahead and just attach it to the next stitch just like that. And then I'm going to get my scissors snip it and then pull it through and then I'll weave in this end just with my tapestry needle and you can weave it in however you like just make sure to do a few different areas where you make sure and snug it down so it's not going to come loose when you wash it. This should be fully washable and dryable in the washer and dryer. Or you could wash it and then lay it flat to dry.
Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and snip that end. And I have my other put this there. I have my other end which I'm going to snug up by pulling on it because of the way we did it, it tightens it when you pull on the end. I'm just going to go ahead and go through the back. And I'm going to make like a small knot, which you don't have to do. You can just weave it in. But I kind of like to make a little knot in case it comes loose. The whole thing would fall apart. This is kind of the important end. I'm going to do one more. All right, so I'll go ahead and snip this and then turn her back over. Let's see. And then if you just pull on the points because this white yarn or this cream colored yarn was so stiff it um, it just kind of curled a little bit but once I pulled them all out they looked fine all right there is our final object and I really love how it turned out it is so cute I'm going to go ahead and go over what the length across is in case anybody was wondering. Let me get a tape measure. Okay. Okay, the length across, this is my little frog tape measure I happened to pull up, from point to point. And now this, your mileage may vary, of course. This one is 12 and a half because it depends on which hook you use. If you use a larger hook or a smaller hook, smaller hook will make the uh, stitch is denser and it'll make it smaller. Um, if your yarn is thicker or thinner, it'll also have to do with the size across that you'll end up with on your finished object. I love how it turned out. I'm just going to go over real quick. I'm just going to go over what yarn we had left from the three balls that we used for our project. So we had, it looks like we used about half of each of these. This one was a little bit more than half. This one was about half and this one was about half. So, and these are the yarns that we use. This one was the Crafter's Secret and I love this cotton and then the sugar and cream. And then I'll have the colorways down below in the notes. And this is how she turned out. I love her. She is so cute. And I hope you try um, one of these because you'll definitely be hooked like I am. I love making them. This one, this one was my, this is the back. This one was a little bit smaller. I didn't do that extra round around it. So if you wanted to just make her a little bit smaller and not do that extra row around the edge like I did here, you can just do this. This is with just one row around the edge. And this one's nice as well. This one I used um, like a softer mercerized cotton for, and I believe I used, I love this cotton in two different colors for this one. And I used like about a little bit more than a half a skein on each. Catch you next time. Thanks for joining me.